It's been known by many that I am very fond of the Volvo XC90, in particular the original XC90, the one that won the hearts of many families and many individuals, including myself, for over a decade. Nowadays, things have changed. The XC90 has grown, softened, and become even more refined for the modern age luxury SUV buyer. Today I have something very special, not just to myself, but I'm sure to a lot of you. Let's take a look at this father and son duo, V8 versus T8. Who will win? So today we have the pleasure of having two of the most highest optioned XC90s that you could get in each of their years, the V8 Executive and the T8 Ultimate, two of the top dogs of the XC90. So this XC90 in particular is the P2 XC90, the first generation, and this one happens to be my own personal XC90. His name is Duke, a 2009 Volvo XC90 V8 executive with a few options added on, such as the rear entertainment system and also the fridge in the center console that brought the MSRP of this in 2009 to about $55,000 which in nowadays money, 2023 money, that's about $79,000. Talk about recession rich. Now the new XC90 on the other hand, which is not mine, this is a 2024 XC90 T8 all wheel drive ultimate recharge. That's one hell of a name and this has one hell of a price which you will know in a little bit. But this one also has every option that you could get on the XC90 plus a few more like the Bang & Olufsen audio system, the active chassis with air suspension, and also the lounge package that adds massaging seats, cooled seats, and a bunch of other features that bring the MSRP of this XC90 to a whopping $87,495. That's right, almost $90,000, but it's surprising that the prices of this and that are a little bit similar. The powertrains in these two really could not be any more different. And I wanted to start with the old iron because it's just, not just what I'm familiar with, but what I will already say I like more. This, my friends, is the V8. You really will never see a V8 in an XC90 ever again, and Volvo, really didn't put many V8s in these. This is the B8444S. It's a 4.4 liter dual overhead cam V8. It makes 311 horsepower and 325 pound-feet of torque. Healthy numbers back in the day that were still very competitive to a lot of the other higher output crossovers of the time, but I know it's nothing compared to that T8. This engine is paired to a six-speed automatic transmission and Volvo's Haldex Generation 3 all-wheel drive system, which is purely mechanical, unlike the other one behind me. In terms of MPGs, Volvo wasn't that optimistic with their ratings because they rated this at 13 in the city, 19 on the highway, and a combined rating of 15. Those numbers are a little bit worse than what I actually see in real world driving. I get about 15 in this city. <laughs> I know, still nothing compared to this, but 15 in this city, 21, 22 on the highway, and a combined of 17 or 18. Now, even though this powertrain is not as fast and as powerful as the T8, this still gets the XC90 V8 to 60 miles an hour in just under seven seconds, which was pretty respectable considering it's pretty heavy. This gadget, on the other hand, is way different than my old iron behind me. Gone are the eight cylinders like mine. The car gets quite upset when you pop the hood and all the lights come on. But gone is the six cylinder in the T6 XC90. Gone is the eight cylinder in the V8 XC90. Nowadays, we have a completely different architecture because in 2016, Volvo went to their SPA platform. But now this uses a two liter dual overhead cam turbocharged and supercharged inline four that's paired to Volvo's plug-in hybrid 
architecture. In this application, it makes 455 horsepower and 523 pound-feet of torque. You see how those numbers are crazy compared to the V8. Unlike other plug-in hybrids like a Prius or even some Lexus models, this still uses a conventional eight-speed automatic transmission. But again, the gas engine only powers the front wheels while the rear axle is powered by an electric motor that provides about 160 horsepower. In conjunction, those get you extraordinary fuel economy numbers for something this heavy and this large at 26 in the city, 27 on the highway, and a combined rating of about 26, 27 as well. I've been getting 26 MPG with a heavy foot using all the torque and all the power this thing makes. You also get about 40 miles of electric range, and if that hybrid battery runs out, you can also use the gas engine, and this works like a normal hybrid as well. Now you may be thinking this monster of a powerhouse must be fast, and I will say, it is fast, and it is a lot faster than the V8. Zero to 60 for this XC90 T8 recharge is quoted at four and a half seconds. Four and a half seconds. Aside from their key differences like powertrain and suspension, the XC90 has virtually stayed the same, at least on paper. There's still three row SUVs that compete with the likes of the Acura MDX, nowadays the Lexus TX. Back then I would say the P2 competed with the GX470 at the time, but there's still the same luxury crossovers that we know and love. On this side, the P2, I personally like the older XC90 because it is shorter in wheelbase and also in overall length at 189 inches long. It is about the same size as a fourth gen Toyota 4Runner. So again, that's why I like the smaller P2 XC90. And surprisingly, they're not even that different in size. These also come standard with 8.9 inches of ground clearance, so it still is reasonably off-road capable, and it still feels rugged. This one, because it's the executive model in 2009, comes with these 19-inch alloy wheels called Elastor. It's a six-spoke design, and I painted them in gunmetal to make the car look a little bit more aggressive, but I do have another set of wheels that are in my garage right now. <laughs> Volvo also still offered the XC90 P2 with a lot of safety tech to make this a better daily driver and make this actually feel luxurious back then. You have a blind spot monitor with power folding mirrors, rear parking sensors, which are very useful. The only thing that this doesn't have is a front parking sensor system. To me, the P2 is also more compelling because of the suspension setup that you get with these. Regular four-wheel independent suspension. Some of these could have auto leveling rear shocks, but I don't believe that mine has them, but a much more reliable system. Although it isn't as comfortable as air suspension, Volvo really tuned the suspension nicely on the P2. Of course, especially on face value, the new XC90 is substantially bigger looking than the P2. It's about four inches wider at 79 inches compared to 75 on this one. And also it's about six inches longer at 195 inches long. So you definitely notice the length, but it's mainly evident in the rear door for second row volume. I lock the door, so it's upset. <laughs> in terms of wheel options for this T8 Ultra, Ultimate. This one comes standard with these 21 inch gentrified looking alloy wheels. They actually do look pretty nice and Volvo offers this wheel design on a few of their other models as well. And in terms of suspension, this one is riding on the optional air suspension for $1,700. It really transforms the ride and makes this thing float on the road. You can also change the ride height, but the only difference with this XC90 versus a lot of other vehicles with air suspension, you can't manually raise and lower the car by the push of a button. It only works depending on what drive mode you're in. In its normal height, Volvo gives you about eight and a half inches of ground clearance, which is about the same as the P2, but you'll still find the P2 a little bit more rugged and more off-road capable. Volvo also kept the theme of the 70s 
safest vehicle on the road with the XC90. Now you have pilot assist, which is a semi-autonomous self-driving feature. There's also a 360 camera, front and rear parking sensors with front and rear cross traffic alert. They really loaded this thing to the gills with tech to make sure that you're safe. Now there are many similarities and also differences in the trunks of each of these XC90s. I will say I really am biased towards the split tailgate in mine because it makes it so nice and easy and also versatile because you can open the top half and also the bottom half. You can use it like a table, like a chair. This one's got a chair and a table. It just is much more trucky and versatile and it just fits my needs better. But in the case of the brand new XC90, of course, everything has a motor in it to brake. This one has a power tailgate, which does open up very quickly. It's also height adjustable. And of course it has the smart key access system and all the things that are really nice and I would wish that mine had, but I'm okay without them. In Duke's case, space is still plentiful. And this is why I and many people still go for these older XC90s. I have my third row down, but if the third row is up, you get about 11 cubic feet of volume. If you fold the third row down like mine, you get 43 cubic feet of volume. And with all the rows folded flat, you get up to 85 cubic feet of volume. Extremely cavernous, and it really makes this thing like a minivan, but cooler. Also, in terms of towing capacity, things are actually very similar between these two. 5,000 pounds of towing with this one. I do know people that tow more with their V8s, and eventually I will probably do the same once I put a trans cooler on this one, but 5,000 pounds on the old one. So as we open up the fancy newfangled hatch, of the new XC90, space is actually better behind the third row. 15 cubic feet of volume behind the third row. And also I wanted to note, because this one has the air suspension, there's buttons here that actually allow you to lower and raise to make it easier to load things in or take things out. It makes it very cool. 41 cubic feet of volume behind the second row, so it's actually a little bit smaller than the old one, and 85.7 cubic feet of volume with all rows folded flat. That's barely noticeable compared to the 85.1 in mine. And now in this case, in terms of towing, Volvo actually rates the T8 XC90 to also tow 5,000 pounds. Very surprising, this one doesn't have the hitch on it, but interesting 5,000 pounds. Getting into the third row in the P2 is thankfully an easy feat on both sides because on both sides Volvo gives you latches to slide the second row seat forward and out of the way. Gives you a nice amount of space and it's reasonably easy to get into the back of this. I've actually been in the back of my Volvo for a few times. So of course, because the older XC90 is shorter, it is a little bit less roomy back here. I can just barely fit in the back of this. My hair is brushing up against the ceiling and also my knees are in the back sides of these seats, but it's not terrible. My feet can fit under the seat and it's only for two people. They only give you two spaces here. I actually wouldn't mind being back here for an hour, two hours. So it's not that bad. And the actual third row seat is still very soft and comfortable, just like all the other seats as well. And I also have air vents back here. I also have audio controls, which is crazy. Cup holders and both sides also have storage, but I don't have sunshades back here, but it's okay. But yeah, it's honestly not that bad. And I'm five foot nine. Just like the P2, there's a lever on each outboard seat to slide the seat forward so you can get into the third row. But I don't know, it's probably because this is a new car. Ugh. Kids are not gonna move this seat by themselves. It's actually pretty hard to move and you don't get as much room to get in compared to the, well, the P2 XC90. I'm surprised to see that the third row in this one is actually pretty much the same as mine. Maybe, 
a little bit smaller, and that might be just because this seat slides back a little bit more, but in terms of headroom, it's the same. Again, I'm five foot nine. In terms of knee room, my knee is touching the back of this seat. If I slid this seat a little bit forward, I would still be able to sit in front of myself, but it's actually pretty comfortable back here. Just like the old one, the bottoms of these are soft and comfortable, so they still thought about third row passengers in this one, thankfully. But it's honestly a pretty accommodating place to be, even though it is a third row. Although, I won't say that it's much bigger than the old one. Things in the second row, thankfully, do get better in the XC90, and it's actually still also not that bad. This does show that the P2s are not the biggest cars in the world, but every single row gets an adequate amount of space because I'm five foot nine and the driver's seat is in my driving position. And this seat is all the way back in its tracks. I will say that because you can slide the, actually all three seats can individually slide by themselves. So this one, this one, and then the other one. That's crazy that all of them do that. I actually didn't know that until right now. But again, I have decent amount of legroom. Headroom is great because it's very tall and box shaped. And it's actually very comfortable. The rear seat is very soft, just like all the seats in this. So comfortable. I love it. The middle seat also can back up as a jump seat for children. So that's very nice. I believe the new one also does that. And the seat is a 40-20-40 split, so you can drop this in the middle and then put long things in the middle of your XC90. In terms of creature comforts, though, you get air vents on both sides, just like the third row. And also, the rear outboard seats are heated in the XC90 Executive. That's a very nice feature to have. There's also a 12-volt power outlet back here and a little, not ashtray, but some storage that kind of looks like an ashtray to me. <laughs> Most importantly, this one has the option of the rear entertainment system. So on both the driver and passenger side headdress, there is a screen. It's actually very cool and it uses a little remote, but it only plays DVDs. You can also play things like, I guess a console, if you had something like an inverter, because there's video and audio outputs, like the old style. But it's actually very nice back here, and I would not mind at all being in the back seat of my XC90. Now for the second row in the Spa XC90, it's still very easy to get into. The bottom of the seat is very soft and comfortable. The doors still close with a nice solid thunk, although I will say they're not like the bank vault-like doors in the P2. The rear seat in this one is a little bit roomier compared to mine, especially in terms of width because this is a few inches wider, but I'm five foot nine again and I can fit my feet under the seats. I have a decent amount of legroom and there's also a decent amount of headroom. Headroom in the old one seems a little bit better. Also, just like the old one, all three seats are independent of each other, so it's a 40-20-40 split seat. So that means not only just my seat can slide forwards and backwards, but the middle seat can also slide forwards and backwards. I really assume that these things are hard to just move because it's a brand new car. This middle seat can also recline, just like the other seats on the back side of this. Also, just like mine, the booster seat is in the same spot with the same soft material. The rear seats are also very soft and cushy as well. There's also an armrest, unlike mine, I'm pretty sure, and two small cup holders in the middle here. But it's actually pretty nice back here. The seats in the back are just as comfortable. I don't know if I'd say more comfortable, but they're still really comfortable. In this one, I have two zones for the rear passengers. The rear seats are also still heated, but not ventilated in this one. I love that Volvo puts air vents in the B pillars as well for maximum ventilation. And there's also a USB-C, well, two USB-C ports in the middle there. So it's actually still accommodating, not feature packed like you may expect, but it's still nice. So the front seat of the P2 is a very nice 2000s luxury place to be. The doors are heavy. 
They close with a nice bank vault like thud. They really feel nice. All the doors in this, even with 230,000 miles, feel really solid. This has a three spoked wood steering wheel. I love the wood wheel. It feels great in the hand. And even at this mileage, it's not really in that bad of shape. It's only just barely cracking, but it doesn't really bother me at all. There's also buttons on the wheel. The left side, those buttons control the cruise control. The buttons on the right control the audio, just volume and track forward and backwards. It's very simple in here. Something else that's very simple in this is the key. This one, this one has the R back plate on it, so it's not an actual R, but this is the key for these P2 Volvos. This yellow button actually turns on the parking lights when you're getting in at night, if you're wondering, but it's a flip key. I love the key in this, but because this has a normal traditional key, it's a little bit more reliable and we can start her up and listen to that 4.4. For the most part, all of these XC90s look the same, just like the new XC90s, honestly. But again, especially in executive trim, these are really nice. The difference in trim levels will be evident with the different materials on the inside, like on the dash, the door panels, and also on the seats. This one being the XC90 executive has heated, cooled, and massaging front seats. Both of them massage and both of them cool. And even being an old car, the cooled seats work really well. The massage also works well, but it's only on the back. This one also being the XC90 Executive gives it wood trim around the radio bezel. Very nice in here. I actually plan on replacing this head unit with a legend head unit that allows Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and that really makes the interior of the old one feel just like a new one. I also really like how you sit in the P2. You sit up high, you have a nice view of the road, you don't really see much of the hood, so it's very easy to park. This one also has dual zone automatic climate control. It works very well and it's very simple. You don't have to go into menus or sub menus or find where the climate controls are. They're just right here. That's what I like about this one. Everything that I need is just very easy to find. In between the two front seats is the refrigerator. That's the other option that this XC90 has, and it actually still works. It keeps all my beverages cool. It has two settings on it as well, and it really does work. It's actually very cool that I found one with this refrigerator. The front seat of the new one is also quite the change. Again, because this one has air suspension, it makes it very easy. There's so many bings and bongs in these new cars, but because it's able to lower, it makes it a bit easier to get inside. But this is the interior of the all new XC90. It is quite the departure from the P2 with its many buttons, although I miss the buttons from the P2. <laughs> this one, unlike my XC90, has a smart key access system, and this is the new key that Volvos use. They've been using this for a little while, but because it has this smart key, you have not push button start, but keyless start, I will say, because they put the ignition switch in the middle of the car, so you can put your foot on the brake and twist this thing to go. So if you're looking for a full in-depth review of both my XC90 and also this one, those videos will be on the top right. It certainly does feel nicer in here than the P2. And first of all, I love the interior colors of this, all the stitching everywhere. It really feels classy and it really feels luxurious. The old one is definitely more utilitarian, but I like that a little bit more. This one is definitely high tech. This one has a three-spoked leather-wrapped wheel. It feels great in the hands. It has nice bolsters on it, and you can see some stitching on it as well. There's also buttons on the wheel as well. Thankfully, they're pretty simple, just like the P2. The left side, those buttons control the cruise control functions and the pilot assist features that come with this new XC90. The buttons on the right control the audio controls and also some of the functions on the gauges as well. The gauges in this one are completely digital, unlike the analog gauges in the P2. I like them both, and I won't lie, I do like digital gauges. Looking at the driver's door panel, I have three-person memory for the mirrors, the seat, 
but not the steering wheel, just like my old one. I honestly still think that the P2 seats are a little bit more comfortable, but these are still a great evolution of Volvo seats. They're still very soft, still very comfortable. These seats, because it's the ultimate trim, offer an insane amount of adjustments. You have thigh extensions. Of course, this one massages you and cools you, and of course, heat as well. The steering wheel in this one is also heated. I will say the massage on this one is better. I mean, I expected that because it's a new car. In the center, you can see the technological marvel called a screen in this XC90. It's okay, but there definitely is a learning curve if you've not been in one of these. Even if you've been in one of these with the older census unit, I would still say there is a bit of a learning curve with this new Google infotainment system. Thankfully, at least, it is pretty snappy and pretty responsive to use, and it's just like having a tablet in the screen. Volvo offers a multitude of different cameras in here, like a backup camera, a front view camera, and of course, a 360 view camera as well. You also get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but only wired in this one. But the overall layout of the interior is pretty similar to the P2, the way how you sit in here, the high visibility lines, everything in here feels more like an evolution, and I honestly appreciate that. And I'll say this does definitely feel nicer inside. The quality of the materials is much richer. Things just really feel high class in here. Being in the old XC90 is also very nice. As you drive, even with this high mileage, it still has such a solid feeling on the road. And this one even feels even heavier than the new XC90, even though I'm pretty sure the new XC90 is much heavier than this. It's because I have a bunch of tools in the back and my recovery bag. That's why you may hear some things in the back. But other than that, this thing is actually still very well buttoned down. One of the reasons that I opted for the V8 in this XC90 over the other trims is the V8. It really makes it worth it in this. It isn't as fast as the new XC90, but it is still extremely peppy. The response of the throttle is also very good as well. Very smooth power and sure-footed, but it's really nice in here. I love it. My XC90 does have the exception of being pretty quiet because you probably hear this noise. That is uh, the rear carrier bearing, which is part of the rear diff on this. That is something prone to happen with age, especially if you don't change your diff fluid. So I bought this car knowing that it had this defect. So eventually it will be as quiet as the new one. But believe me, from my old XC90, the interior of this is very quiet when you're driving. And the engine doesn't really have too much noise. It doesn't bring too much noise to the interior of this. Ultimately, the new and old XC90s feel very different, but also very similar to each other. We'll see how that new one is. It's a really nice place to be, especially considering how this XC90 is. So of course, things get way quieter in the new XC90. This is what I mean. I can't wait to do the diff on my old one because it won't be as quiet as this one, but it'll be pretty damn quiet because this thing is whisper silent. Since I am gonna be getting onto this main road, I'll go into power mode, which lowers the thing a bit, makes the steering a bit stiffer, and also makes the engine ready to go. It's very smooth. It really gets up to speed nicely. In power mode, it feels the most like the V8 because it just has all of its power ready to go whenever you need it. But in hybrid mode, there is a bit of a delay when you're trying to drive it aggressively. When you're driving it normally, hybrid mode is actually very smooth and it blends the electric system with the gas system very well, very seamlessly as well. So I like how Volvo did that. The air suspension really does just float along on the road. It really takes bumps well, especially with these big wheels on it too. I've driven a lot of these Spa Generation XC90s, all kinds of motors 
from the T5s to the T8s in this one, and they're all pretty good, very smooth, but the only thing is the reliability of this hybrid powertrain. Mm, I don't know if I... I'll put it like this. This powertrain, I doubt, will do 232,000 miles and still feel just like how it rolled off the showroom floor. Unlike the V8, the V8 still has the same pull. Anyways, around parking lots, it's very nice. This one has a nice lightweight feeling to it. I love the weight that the steering has, so that's something that I wish mine had, but mine still has a nice weight to the steering as well. But because it's electric steering, it makes it so effortless to turn the wheel, so effortless to do quick maneuvers. Something else that you'll notice is how much tighter the turning circle is on this one because you don't have a huge engine mounted transverse in the engine bay. We'll get on to the power here in hybrid mode. I'm not flooring it because I like driving these more relaxed and more comfortable than, you know, just bombing it everywhere. This is a really nice cruiser in hybrid mode. The suspension gets a little softer and it goes up a bit. The drive modes actually do change a bit with how this thing drives. I also like that because this one is a plug-in hybrid, you can have this solely rely on its electric motor when you're driving it in pure mode and it still has decent acceleration in that electric driving mode because it still has about 160 horsepower on the rear axle so it's actually pretty acceptable i can also definitely notice the size of this over mine it just feels a little bit longer which it is and it feels a little bit wider inside which it is but it doesn't feel cumbersome it doesn't feel like it's too big i do have to say it does feel a little bit more minivan-like than mine. This one feels more like a car while mine feels like a truck, if that makes sense. You just feel like you can bounce over potholes and speed bumps in the old one. While this one can do the same thing, you just don't get that same feeling. To me, the main differences between this and mine are the steering, of course, because it's hydraulic versus electric. This still handles very well, just like the old one but I love the weight of the hydraulic steering. Also, the braking on this is much more sure-footed. It feels really good. The air suspension is also very nice, but it doesn't bother me that much because I know that this will be very expensive to maintain. It accelerates with such authority. I like this powertrain, but it really does feel like two different vehicles in one because there's a lot of power coming from the front wheels and a decent amount of power coming from the rear wheels, but there is a bit of a disconnect and you'll notice that under hard acceleration because there is a lot of torque steer, which is annoying. <laughs> I'll go into pure mode right now. And acceleration, I mean, of course, it's not blisteringly fast, but I can get up to 55, 60 perfectly fine and again you get about 36 miles of electric driving range i'll go back into hybrid mode but they really did a good job making this feel like more of an evolution than a revolution on the xc90 because i like the comfortable feeling of these it's just more of a comfort car than anything so i'm glad that they didn't try to make it too sporty it still just hugs the road very well but not in a sporty dynamic way like an Acura MDX or a Mazda CX-90. It's just such a comfortable car and to me I describe mine or just I guess any all well, these XC90s as comfort cars because they're so comfortable they make you feel safe and uh, it's just very soothing to drive this thing. Okay so the verdict. It wasn't that hard for me to figure out which one I liked more just because I've had so many of these, but I've also driven so many of these. And the new XC90 on paper is so much better in terms of powertrain, efficiency, speed, but I still like mine more. 
I love the solid, reliable V8, just the reliability of this whole thing in general. Let me know in the comments if you have a brand new XC90 or the old XC90. I know I have a lot of P2 XC90 fans on the channel, so hey guys, but I won't talk too much. Again, let me know what you think is better, which one you like better. Thank you for all the likes comments and subscriptions and also the support on the Volvo videos. Also stay tuned for more of the Volvo videos of this one and also the full review of this one as well. But enough of my rambling. I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye peeps.